Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at denoising your images. And it's actually one of the most important things you can do to reduce your render time and get a clean image. So the function of denoising is to essentially reduce the overall render time by applying a filter to your final rendered image as a post-processing effect from a batch render. So this only works as a in batch rendering. It won't work in IPRs, it won't work in um, your uh, final render view in the, uh, in the it previewer either. You have to do a batch render for it to work. Essentially what it does is it sort of can take care of the last 30% of a render uh, Instead of setting your sample rate higher to get the image cleaned up You set it lower than you would expect and then you can let the denoiser take care of the rest So that's how it, it decreases your render time overall uh, So I'm going to take you through the workflow for using it and just show you how to activate a couple of things If you have an NVIDIA card uh, a GTX 400 series or later, you should have a CUDA 7.0 enabled card, which means you will be able to use GPU uh, denoising. So to enable that, what you'll need to do is, before you do anything, go into your Windows Explorer, head to your Pixar folder, which by default is in Program Files Pixar, go to Renderman Pro Server, go to Lib, and go to denoise. And then we want to right click default filter.json and uh, open with Notepad. I've got Notepad++, which is the exact same as regular old Notepad. It just lines things up a little bit um, more clear. So you can grab this, it's free as well. Just search for it on Google. Um, so to enable GPU rendering, uh, we have to change one value and it's this line here. Um, it's line 22. You need to go to GPU index and it should say negative one by default. That means it's using CPU. If you just remove that and change it to zero, it means it will use your GPU. If you don't have a GPU, which it can use, you'll either get an error and it won't work or it will default to your CPU. So I've got a GTX 1070, so I am able to use this. Um, and before I jump out of here, there is one more thing worth mentioning. You can actually change the strength of the, um, of the denoiser. Uh, and worth noting is whether or not you're doing it separate on separate specular and diffuse channels or if they're combined. By default, it's uh, they're split, which you can see here. You could change this to false if you wanted to change it so they were together, but um, I'd just go with the default for now. So if you want to make it so the strength is higher, so theoretically you'd, get, you'd be able to render at a lower sample rate or a lower convergence, and um, or pixel variance, therefore convergence, you could change it to something like 0.7, which will make it stronger and your render time's a little bit lower. It will take a little bit longer in post-processing, but um, you'll probably end up saving time in the long run. So to change the strength, if you've got it, uh, if you've got split specular diffuse true, which I showed you at the top there, you can change the strength value to 0.7 or as low as 0.2, so if you want less strength, and then the same goes for specular here under strength. You can change that to 0.7 as your high end or 0.2 at your low end. If you aren't splitting specular and diffuse, then you can just set it here, strength point um, to whatever between 0.2 and 0.7. I'm not gonna change it from 0.5 for now though. I'm just gonna leave it at 0.5 for the rest of this tutorial. So make sure you save this file and then close it and jump back into Maya. So you'll see I've got a scene here that is ready for render. Well, pretty much ready for render. I'm going through the process of optimizing it now. If you're interested in what this actually is, uh, stay tuned to my channel in the future. I'll actually be releasing this animation. But um, for now, we can go to our render settings and enable the denoiser. So the first thing you need want to do is go to features and then under denoise, you've got two options or you've got three options you got off, which obviously it won't be on. Frame, if you're rendering a single frame, and cross frame, if you're rendering an animation. I'm just gonna be rendering a single frame, so I'm gonna use frame. With animation, it needs to test between two frames to make sure that it's not getting um, sort of strange color variation between the two frames. So it tests the previous fra frame to decide what it's gonna do with the pixel, essentially. Next, you've got filter. We're gonna be using default for this tutorial. If you're rendering out volumes on a separate um, AOV, uh, you want to have it set to volume, that would pretty much be the only other thing you're looking at. And obviously alpha on a separate uh, separate AOV as well, you could do that. 
but uh, I'm just going to be rendering this, this out as a beauty pass, so default is fine. So as far as optimization goes, I'm not going to be doing too much here, but um, I'm going to set my pixel variance to point, uh, point 0.1, which is quite high. This would produce a fairly noisy image, and you'll see the unfiltered version will be quite noisy. Uh, in my render settings, I've got max path length set to 3, um, and I've got number of light samples set to 2 and then default ray depths are set to one and one. Got core sticks off and I've got opacity, a cumulative opacity off as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's all the settings that I need to reveal there for that one. So you'll notice that uh, I've got my sample set to 32. So this is actually a fairly low sample rate, uh, but I still will get a pretty good looking image at the sample rate uh, with uh, the denoise feature on uh, in spite of what you'd be used to with noise. I've got my min sample rate set to zero So that's the square root of 32 by default. It automatically sets it to that uh, Which is something like roughly six. I think it will round down to we then need to go to our passes tab um, You'll need to obviously have RGBA set and then you can choose your filter type here I'm not going to go through all the different types of filters most of the time Gaussian will do the trick If you want to investigate more about the different types of filters and how they work I recommend going to the render man documentation. It's quite clear there how that uh, might affect particular renders Filter size 2x2 two two, but the default is fine for most things as well. Uh, I'm going to keep it at that so if that's all fine, make sure that your scene is saved. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you've set your project. Um, so I've got mine set to small robot and it is set. So now I'm going to go up to render man and I'm going to batch render. I'm going to stop the recording here and batch the render out and then come back when I'm done. Okay, so our render is finished and you can see the render time was 1 minute and 56 seconds uh, and I forgot to mention this is, um, render is at 720p, so that's 1280 by 720. Uh, it's also worth giving your file name a prefix if you wish, otherwise it will use the default scene name um, just for the sake of cleanliness when you've got your um, render output. Also worth mentioning, uh, we should be using an EXR for final renders. You want to use something that is linear and 32-bit as you will get the best image quality and there's no point sort of rendering out a JPEG and then trying to get it to look good when you uh, don't have the bit depth there. So now let's go into our project file. So wherever you've set your project, you'll have a folder called RenderMan, and then you need to go to the name in which it rendered out as. So I've got RMD Noise is the name of this. And then under images, you'll get your two images. So the first one here is your unfiltered image, and the second one is your filtered image or the or denoised image. So I'm going to open up both of those and so you can see the difference between the denoised image and the raw image. Okay, so here is our unfiltered image as you can see it's fairly noisy obviously you'd expect that with a low pixel or a sort of a high pixel variance and a low sample rate so with the sample rate of 32 and the pixel variance of 0.1 you can see a lot of noise in the background there this image has got depth of field on it it's got a few lights it's got a um, dome light and it's got a directional light and I've also got a key light on the character so it's picking up quite a lot of noise in the shadows here and the shadows in his eyes and in any area that's out of focus especially the further um, areas in the background with specular now let's compare that to our denoised image as you can see a lot lot smoother um, this could probably still do with some further optimization if I zoom in here at the top you can still see this noise and um, whether or not this would be obvious in the animation um, is sort of yet to be seen depends on what the viewers focuses I would probably further optimize this particular render to get it a little bit nicer uh, but I'll probably cover render optimization in a separate tutorial maybe looking at the same image but um, you sort of want to balance out time of um, render versus image quality and at 720p that is the size that it's going to be displaying as on a screen. Um, this is a 1080 screen, obviously. So it doesn't look too bad. And that's 
pretty much all there is to it. So um, particularly for things like animation, this is great because you can save a lot of render time by just doing some post stuff with denoise. Um, otherwise, with your single frame images, if you want to get a quicker render, if you want to render at a lower sample rate and a higher pixel variance, then you could use denoise to save you uh, minutes, hours, days possibly on renders. Um, it's something that I'm going to be incorporating into this particular animation once it's done, once it's ready to render, uh, whether or not I render on my home computer or, or send it out to a render farm uh, in its entirety is yet to be seen. I'm sort of working out the cost and things on that at the moment. But um, that's pretty much all there is to it. So hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If you did, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you have subscribed for more CG tutorials every week, two tutorials a week at the moment, in fact. Otherwise, you can follow the channel on Facebook as well, where you can get updates for when I upload new tutorials. Upload your work there as well. I love to see it. I love to give um, feedback on it. And there's plenty of other people there that can give feedback as well. Lots of talented individuals. So if you want to have a chat to them, make sure you jump into the Facebook group. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.